We are live. Yay. Pregnancy projection day. Oh my gosh, what day are we in? <laughs> it's four. Day number four. Yes. Ciao, la late. Oh, see, sorry. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry. Ciao, Crystal. Thank you for being with us. You're and, so welcome. Um, so, we're continuing this exploration with pregnancy projection. And as we actually already saw, it doesn't apply just to pregnancy, but to any project that we might are we might be giving life to, or being part of creating in the in the universe in the world, giving voice, giving light, whatever we want to. Yeah. So today's topic is trusting your body, which is something we could totally have more of in any possible field, I guess. Yeah. Not just pregnancy. <laughs> But let's start with pregnancy. Do you you did you had the access to those while um, expecting a baby? So that that was great. Just would you like to share anything with us? Oh, how it has been? What tools would you recommend? What's not? You know? Oh yeah, no, it's it's been um, it's been so much fun and and amazing. You know, like having the tools and being pregnant because like I haven't been nauseous for a day basically, and you know like. Um, I had like my I had like swollen feet. I got a bit emotional at times, you know, like crying out of the blue. But that's like that's basically all the you know like symptoms I had uh, during the pregnancy, and um, and I lost quite a lot of weight during the pregnancy as well, and afterwards really fast. So it's like you know like all these um, things when you when you talk about projections, all these things that people expect you to have, I. Most of them I didn't have, so <laughs> so it's been it's been pretty cool and pretty amazing and um, um, and a lot of fun. Like I I really enjoyed being pregnant and um, yeah, it's it's really being constantly being in the question and and I think you know like one of the main uh, things to be aware of because. Well, I had I had the sense like when I was pregnant, like my awareness just like I was way more present and it felt like I was aware for 10 people basically. Um, um, and and so yeah, really like who does this belong to was was a big <laughs> was a big one. So when I was emotional and I started crying out of the blue, I really started asking questions like, okay, who does this belong to? And then it changed quite fast. Um <laughs> which is nice to have you know like it's such a it relief. is amazing it's so funny when um I mean what I've seen and I guess there is a cultural thing as well going on around this but like um like for example in Italy when you're pregnant you get treated like I don't know like a very fragile thing which for me was never a reality I was like what the fuck you know like it's like <laughs> really and I and I thought like I'm growing a life and I cannot carry grocery bag I mean it's great to have the option not to carry grocery bag but still you know I was like I'm a badass I'm creating you know nails and toes over here you think I cannot you know handle the rest of my life as well yeah um, and uh and then um and then it's just supposed to be harsher and harsher on you somehow. It's like, oh my gosh, the first trimester and in Italy, which is fucking insane for me, because like I am not the biggest, I don't know, fan of numbers. It's like, how many weeks are you pregnant? And I was like, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's like three months, maybe four. And I was like, geez, I'm not checking on that constantly. It's just I'm pregnant. I'm obviously pregnant. You see my belly? Well, <laughs> You know? and there is this constant like checking and um just like expectation of yeah the first trimester you're gonna feel nauseous and then the rest one okay. you shouldn't eat, eat fish because otherwise you're gonna cause a brain tumor in your baby <laughs> and you're halfway with your sushi life <laughs> okay i guess thank you for the projection and um i might have my reality on this one thank you so much <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but so many point of view like oh <laughs> so many like it's it's crazy especially I guess first uh during the first trimester but also with coffee and um I heard I heard them a lot but I was also pregnant during corona so I didn't see that many people you know so it, it, it was actually a nice period of time because you know like you don't have that many projections of people and people you know like 
he didn't really see anyone. So there was no one, you know, who could project anything. So it was great. <laughs> it was a great time to be pregnant, basically. That is actually, because since you're quarantined, you're having your reality or that's it. I mean, that's the only kind of choice that, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the thing yeah. that you are maybe easily more in tune with. So that exactly. is normal. That is yeah, normal. I couldn't really, you know, like go out and, you know, like, I mean, could go for coffee and stuff, but there, there was... Like I was basically home uh, most of the time, right? So, so it was like ease to really have my my own reality and to really choose what I know and you know like like trusting my body as well. And it was interesting due to Corona and stuff. Um, we also had a lot of neighbors, you know, like um, um, rebuilding and reconstructing their houses. So at the end of uh, at the end of the pregnancy. Uh, in the beginning, I wanted to do, you know, like the bath labor at home, and it's very popular in the Netherlands and maybe everywhere. But um, and and at some point, um, it changed. It wasn't like anymore to do um, labor at home. So I packed my bag and I had it ready, you know, and uh, I prepared everything. And uh, um, and and so. It just changed, and then they and then the the neighbors started with the construction, and it was just like bam, 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 and you know, like banging and drilling and really? everything. And it was, it was like, ah, now I know why it's not light. Um, and um, and but also like um, um, during um, when I went into labor, I had to. Um, at some point, I was like, oh, are these contractions? I think it's contractions. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I think it's contractions. And um, and um, um, my boyfriend, he, I was just like, is it starting? I was like, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> you know, like, um, but yeah, they say with the first one, you know, it could take for hours and hours and hours. So I was like, should I go to work? I was like, yeah, I think you can. I mean, you know, like first child, many hours, not a projection. Um, but he was like, mm, maybe I should stay home. I was like, okay, <laughs> you can stay home, which was a great idea because um, uh, I think I got the first contraction at like, 6 30 and then at um 8 30 it would like it went super fast it went really fast so at 8 30 i had like um, a couple of minutes in between so we started calling the nurse and and um and i and i i, I was like i need to eat bear i need need to eat a pear so <laughs> my boyfriend went out okay <laughs> I, I, got, <laughs> I got a pear and um um and when and then when he was in the store, it's like my water broke. <laughs> Can you come back? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so it was it was it was a fun adventure where um, the, the um, um, nurse came over and um, I actually had um, oh how do you call them like um, the contractions where you have to push um, mm -hmm. like from but from early on. So like at at nine o'clock, I already had these. Uh, that's called and push contractions since I don't know the words. And <laughs> um, so I was already pushing the baby out, but I only had four centimeters. And so um, they're like, yeah, if you want to go to the hospital, now might be a good time. So I'm like, okay, let's go. And I was just like, I needed to, you know, like um, um, try to, you know, like uh, catch the contractions basically. And, and and so I didn't push the baby out while he couldn't go out. Yeah. <laughs> like hold it there, baby, one second. Exactly. <laughs> I want like, to get uh, a little bit more delayed. Otherwise you won't find your yeah. way out there. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, and I, and I went super fast because like, then by then it was like um, 10, 30, I had six centimeters and by 11, it was eight centimeters. But then they started uh, because I had these push contractions and I also had um, like um, a contraction storm, I think. I'm just like making up words in English. But No, I love them. They're self-explanatory. So I think we can yeah. go with contraction storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so there were like contraction, like uh, multiple contractions within uh, one minute. Or something, like or no, like it's like contraction. A, you mean exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so it was. It went really fast, and and um. So there, but there, there was a lot of pressure on the baby, 
And so um, I need I needed to have a C-section. And in the beginning, I was like, no, I don't want to do it because I want to do it all by myself. And then I and there and then I heard like the the urgency in her like uh, voice and I was like okay let's do it <laughs> and it it's was a crazy good thing what you're mentioning and I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, you yeah. right here about Please like do. the c-section it's crazy how many projection and points of view there are around something like a kind of birth being better than another kind of birth yeah. I remember that that was something that I was completely like uh like disappointed by even hearing it as you know mom of the first baby and I had three but like I was like who does this I just even without like knowing cognitively the tools of access even though I had my my second pregnancy I I got my bars run during the whole pregnancy and my first bars class I attended it uh and Martin it was born like he, he was a three days old baby so I had to like really tiny baby and I went to my first bars class and uh, and I sleep the whole time so I wasn't very you know <laughs> awake but it was a great it really was a great thing but um it is amazing how there is so much that this reality try to sell you about what is best what would be better and what like the right way of giving birth and I guess I mean I don't know in the Netherlands but like in Italy for example c-section is something that um a lot of doctor plans like they're like you know it's much easier you can just you know take that week off you know start you know take your oh, yeah. your maternity leave exactly when you want to because it's going to be the day before the c-section and uh, and a lot of people do that and um, a lot of and then on the contrary there are a lot of people that are like oh my gosh if you can avoid c-section because of the stitches and because you know Da, da, da. and there are so many point of view about it not being like respectful of when the baby wants to get out when really exactly. it's a freaking tool that we got that medical science got us and that makes it available for people to give birth in you know in any scenario and even the best scenario could be that you know yeah and I always find it like geez my freaking own business who how do I give birth <laughs> is going to be my choice, you know, and it's yeah. also like an invitation to educate yourself and see what will work. And I totally hear you also with the like giving birth at home conversation, because um, I ponder it, because it's like, it sounded very relaxed. But, but like, for me, like starting with baby number, even in baby number one, I was like, no, screw it, I got a system. And when I want to go out, I will sign, which I al <laughs> always did. After like, I don't know, less than one day, I was like, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> That's it. But like, I learned this magic trick in Italy. You can sign and they're like, okay, you sign. It's your responsibility. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's my responsibility. Ciao, bye. Um, but like, then it was like completely unsustainable for me to give birth at home because it was like, I got dogs. I got cats. My house is far, very far from, you know, sterile or something like uh, that. Yeah. It's yeah. messy. There are kids. There is a garden. There, I don't want to give birth in my home. It means just extra work for me. I don't want to. I'm going to go as if it was an hotel and give birth yeah. and come back home, you know? So, um, I mean, you know, with the access tool, that's all about empowering you that you know what is going to create more exactly. for you. Yeah. Not, and rather than making anything bigger than you, you're empowered to be like, yeah, what is your reality? What exactly. Work for you. <laughs> yeah. And to really, you know, like follow your awareness around it, because at some point, like I said, I was just like, it was, I was like, okay, let's, let's do the C-section. And, um, and so we had like an emergency C-section, everything was really fast. Uh, and then, you know, like I got the, um, uh, injection um, uh, yeah in my back and I was just like oh this is great after working so hard this is great <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm not I'm not a fan of medicine but it was it was a great feeling and um and um in the end I do have to say like I was a bit disappointed because you know like I have a great relationship with my body and I I, I just know what she's capable of and I'm just I was just really like okay let's do this you know I'm excited let's go and you know and then I got to the, like the eight centimeters and um uh, and then we had to go to the c-section but it kind of felt for a while after the the labor I do have to say I was a little bit depressed and, and felt a bit like a failure. And um, and I was just like, I was so disappointed in myself and in my body. And I was just like, 
but we, you know, we got this, we got this. And I was like completely, you know, like uh, what happened over here, you know? And, um, <laughs> and actually one of the few things that was actually light um, was one of the things uh, my boyfriend mentioned. He was like, well, maybe, you know, like maybe the baby was like, oh, do I have to go through this? Uh, no, thank you. Let's go out, you know, like, well, actually what he said was like, um, maybe you learned him too much ease, joy, and glory <laughs> in, you know, like being in the belly. And he was like, do I have to go through this? No way. And then he just came out like, ta-da, with a lot of space, exactly. you know? Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's so light and it's so light. So it's just like, of course. And, and I think that addresses one of the questions as well. I think babies really have their own, you know, like point of view on how they want to uh, be born and, 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 and you know, come to. And it's amazing earth. you were mentioning about like when you were pregnant, how much your awareness increased. The thing that I don't see that people consider as much, at least culturally, at least in Italy, is that from the moment you're pregnant, it's two of you guys. And yeah. the fact that the baby doesn't have, I don't know, his toes yet doesn't mean fuck anything. <laughs> it's no. just like, no. and it's like this, I don't know, you, you become this condo mm. of two. And so there is <laughs> way <Exactly>. more... <laughs> like awareness and information that come both to you and through you and to him or her and through him or her. And um, I recall that, um, I don't know, somehow um, pregnancy and parenting have been and are still as weird and as arrogant as it might sound to topic where um, it was kind of in like, it was a no-brainer for me that I would have had my reality. Uh, yeah. And I heard so many people that were like, you should, you da, da, da. And even people I deeply care about. And it was like, yeah, thank you for the information. And yeah. I'm just going to see, you know, as it goes. And one of my biggest inspiration really is my Nana. She's 97. And I recall, and it was amazing. She had four, four sons. And one day when I was expecting my first, I... I drank, let's say, a bottle of wine. Let's keep it very general. But I ha I went out for a party and I drank, uh, yeah, you know, a couple of, of glasses of wine. And in the morning, I called her and I was like, Nana, I drank. Is he going to be stupid? I was like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? I'm a horrible mom. <laughs> da, da, da. And my grandma was like, you know what? Um, your grandpa wouldn't drink because he would drive when I was pregnant. And she was like, and what she was saying, like, so I'm, I was the one that had to drink. And I was like, okay. And were you okay? And she was like, no, of course. I mean, you know, and, uh, and the, in the moment of like near giving birth, I talked with her and I was like, how is it like, you know, you had four. And she was like, listen up, darling. If it was that hard, the word would have stopped. And it was all I required to hear. <laughs> Great. There you go. Yeah. That's it. That's all I require. Thank you so much. You know, yeah. like, yeah, you know, what if um, we could really get more in touch with the creature, the organism, like the mammal that we are? Yeah, um, definitely. And a little bit less of mind struggles and a little bit more. Definitely. Yeah. No, it's not fun. And um, <laughs> if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. So, um, um, but it was also like with, um, with what you, what you mentioned, you know, like you have this little creature inside of you and, 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 and in my case, his awareness. And one of the things actually, when, when I, what I mentioned before is when I started, like, I suddenly started crying when my boyfriend left. And I was like, who does this belong to? And then he was like, oh my God, you want your daddy to be here. Oh, okay. You know, but then great, I don't have to cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you but for the information. It's coming. Exactly. And, but it was so crazy because I was so crazy sad that he left. And I was like, I really don't have a point of view if you go or not, <laughs> you know, like you could go, we didn't live together yet. And uh, so it was like, yeah. Um, but, but so that's, you know, like there, that's where I was so grateful for the tools because you know, I have this information, you know, and yes, I could blame hormones and whatever. And, and, you know, but it's, it's also like, yeah, just to, 
a different possibility and it was so live for me and I was like because as soon as I acknowledged like mm -hmm. hey okay he would like to have this um you know like he's steady around okay cool um we'll see him tomorrow you know don't worry and then you know like we had this we had so many conversations um in 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 the belly as well even about his name and um and and I was like okay well if this is we we saw his name in an app which actually said something else but we both saw it in this way and and at some point it's like okay if this is what you like to be named um you can convince your dad because you know I know I know I know I I'm not able to convince him so it's just like if you want to you know like so it's like blah 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 like, like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh and and it was funny because every time when i had that conversation um my boyfriend was either in the evening or like a moment after he was like so um his name crystal you really think it should be this and i was like yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. i think it's, it would be a great name so um it's funny so, you're yeah. mentioning that you saw it like um that that your eyes both like the eyes of the dad and your eyes went there yeah um and um it's interesting because you know referring you know circling back to the body conversation I mean you're kind of sharing a body like you're the outside shell and um and there is another little body building up so I wonder how many things your body communicates to you that are relevant in that moment also yeah. through the eyes so maybe you know your mm. your son couldn't already point the finger and be like this is how I want to be called but it was <laughs> like let mommy eyes fall there <laughs> so she sees it and you know it stays with her and um and even with like like cravings um yeah. which um you know it's it's a famous thing like yeah pregnancy craving if a pregnant woman wants strawberries in the middle of you know and they make it even so in like Hollywood movie and stuff he's like oh my gosh I need to find whatever blueberries whatever the heck it is you know yeah um and I recall with like one of my pregnancies my second son I ate everything with pepper like I put a huge amount <laughs> of pepper in anything and I was like like even just not even making it um was like okay sure I mean I guess exactly. if that's what's required uh, yeah. what if we could trust that beyond whatever has been sold to us and the significancy or that is normal somehow um, the information of the information that our body gives us would be exactly what is required and what yeah. would create the most without really you know yeah. beating around the bush so much around it but you're like okay one yeah. pepper or you want ice cream Exactly. <laughs> yeah. always so, well, it's, I had I had it with mango, and he still loves mango, and I knew it already in my belly. It's like, okay, this guy is gonna love mangoes, and now it's his favorite fruit. And you know, like, um, and I ate a lot of mango during my pregnancy, and and also like at some point, uh, you know, like you are not allowed to eat red meat and stuff like this, and and I was just like, I had cravings for red meat, so I just ordered meat, and you know. Um, one of the things he loves is, is red meat, but also like, um, you know, there's a lot of iron in there. So it's also, um, it can actually be quite helpful and uh, to make your body even stronger, you know, like, so it really does beyond, you know, like considered what's right and wrong. Um, there's one quote I always um, mention, um, which is by a guy named Barry Goodfield. Um, but I, I did some like, um, courses with him on body communication basically and nonverbal mm -hmm. leaks so what the body is showing and telling mm -hmm. um and one of the things he mentioned is like the awareness of the body is greater than the intelligence of the mind so I was always like this is mind-blowing I have to remember this and this was before um I did access and you know and then when I did access I was like oh my god this is why I remember this because it's great exactly because it's true <laughs> and it's true and so um so the awareness of the body is greater than the intelligence of the mind. And I was always like, okay, I, this is this is gold. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I kept that in mind um, with, um, you know, like being pregnant um, during labor. Um, and I really, you know, go out of my own way. I go out of my own thoughts. And I just really 
ask questions all the time. Like I said, it was light to go to the hospital. And then I had to need to have the C-section, which was great because I couldn't have done that at home. And, you know, yeah. like all, <laughs> so all these, all these, um, I always let my body's awareness override um, my own thoughts, feelings, and emotions, um, because I just always find found out that it's it's it just creates greater whenever I follow uh, what my body knows. And it's amazing you were mentioning how like you felt like deceived, um, not giving birth naturally, and I just say naturally like this because yeah. you know I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have a point of view about that. I mean, it's it's a tool, you use it and you use whatever works. So yeah, whatever works, use it, you know? And uh, and it's interesting. I have noticed that um, the hospitals and really uh, places where people go for a specific purpose, they do kind of hold in a way an energy of, um, of the other people that pass by there and just had their baby or didn't have their baby or whatever history is there. So I, I found that one thing that contributes to me greatly is just being aware of where I am, even the day of the week, I mean, because sometimes I guess uh, it doesn't happen anymore because I don't live there anymore. But when I used to live in a little like town, I was pissed on Sunday morning because I was like, <laughs> I need to iron and go to have lunch by my in-laws. And our, those are two things that I never did, like ironing, like it's not really my thing and then I never had in-laws <laughs> that lived in the place where I live so it never happened and then I was like da, 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 da. all the horses what day it is and we're like oh it's Sunday everybody's feeling death in the air like this hmm. town has the energy of like instead of Crazy. like yeah I know insanity so so it's interesting to just also um consider how aware you are and how your body shows you something that might belong to completely different situation, people, walks of life that you don't need to kind of burden yourself with. But it's just like, oh, uh, you know, like a lot of people have been passing through these births, all whatever, yeah. and and might have had like feeling, projection, expectation, this deception, whatever it is. Uh, what if we don't take this on ourselves? There is another choice available, let's say. <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah and even you know like um um all odds were you know like against me getting pregnant because I got my uh, fallopian tube removed like a couple of years ago um mm -hmm. on one side and on the other um I had adhesives from um well, in a huge area in the lower part somewhere mm -hmm. and so the other one was actually um like infected as well but like just good enough to to you know um let it stay in basically oh my gosh i love this conversation it's um uh, i mean it just makes me giggle so much with my first kid i was on the pill and mm -hmm. i always use condoms as well and i was pregnant <laughs> so you oh, know yeah. Yeah, what exactly. are you exactly you're like this baby really wanted to come in <laughs> okay yes. let's do it <laughs> you know like <laughs> Uh, well exactly that yeah again so and this is really where we play not in the realm of predictability but rather in the realm of possibilities and there have been uh, quite a few questions submitted regarding um, fertility and uh, like that it doesn't happen to like be pregnant and um, what would it take to also take into consideration that it is um kind of a two-part choice and I don't yeah. mean just maybe it's even three parts really yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you yes. and the daddy and you and the kid and the daddy and the kid they're like there is exactly. this whole combo that is creation as... yeah yeah and, and actually it's crazy because the statistic I've been I had a friend that couldn't get pregnant and then they went uh, with her husband to the doctor to just check to be like can we have a baby and the doctors were like, guys, you don't know the number of couples that come here. They have absolutely nothing physiological, not working. Yeah. But sometimes it do take time yeah. to get to the, even just maybe space of, um, you know, even the timing of the universe, like now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's going to work. Now it's going to be easy and glory. While maybe for some cases that you cannot even foresee or understand, exactly. it's 
maybe yeah i think it would be you know like for so many people so comforting to just really <laughs> well trust what you know and trust your awareness when and, and start asking questions you know like that actually generate because a lot of times it's like from like most of the questions also send in it's like a lot from a wrongness and and not necessarily to create more possibilities and to actually see what's what's possible and and, and a space like you mentioned but it's along like oh how can i fix this problem and how can i fix this problem instead of like oh what do i know about my body and what do i know about um this baby and is this baby actually you know like willing to come to my body is my body actually you know like willing to deliver this baby like there are so many amazing questions you 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 could ask and 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 play with um yeah and biological clock i'm i don't, I don't I'm now 38. Uh, my son is one year. Um, and I, well, you know, like I got pregnant when I was 36. Um, but even at that age, I, you know, like I got so many projections by so many people. Well, in Amsterdam, it's kind of normal age. I think it's like 35 is probably like the average age to get pregnant in Amsterdam. But, you know, like in other villages, it's probably 24 or 25 something. But even, you know, like my uh, close family, they were like, maybe you should, you know, like freeze some eggs and, you know, like put some eggs away, maybe for later, because, you know, like uh, you haven't, you don't have a boyfriend and well, of course now I do, but, you know, like uh, uh, before they were like, you don't have a boyfriend and maybe you want to save some eggs for later in case you want to, <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to do this shit. <laughs> like, if, if, if it's, you know, like, if it's that way, then then yes. And if I'm not having a baby, I'm totally cool with that too. So, you know, like either way, I'm good. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, you know, I was wondering how, how many projections there are around age as well. Yeah. Um, I got my first baby when I just turned 21. And at 25, I had the three of them. And, um, and then like during parenting what like what happened when I would bring my kids to Kita or stuff like this it was amazing how people treated me as if I was the babysitter <laughs> or or the older sister and it sometimes happened to and I'm like like you know I mean you know I'm like I'm flattered that you think that I'm the sister of this kid but no nope. <laughs> flattered and no that's not what it is uh, but like, and even that, like people would say, oh, but it's, uh, you know, like, oh, you're like, I don't know, you're like acting cool because you're, and it's like, uh, it's, it's just that it is, um, there's so many projection around you being able or not to take care of a baby. Um, yeah. And then by the way, and that is my very personal point of view. So take it with a grain of salt. If you do have a baby. My point of view is you're able to have that baby and you are the expert <laughs> in having that baby and yeah, I find it absolutely crazy that people are like oh but and i remember they did it to me a lot it was like oh it's your first one and i was like no actually it's my third one so <laughs> you know if you want to talk you know street experience girl i got a bunch of kids I'm and it was crazy the respect that they had after like oh my gosh so you do have three already can you give me some tips and I'm like the tip is oh, yeah. welcome to the jungle you know what you what is required for your for parenting and having your baby and baby and knowing yeah. what is required in every single solitary situation there are no baby you like there's nothing that you can conclude will work and will work because they're kind of designed to make you know take us out of our comfort zone constantly and not make us sit in our conclusion and our reality like oh if i you know if i bait him and then read him the little story then he will fall asleep ain't gonna happen <laughs> they're no. not planned they're not programmed that way the idea is to keep on you on top of your game to keep you yeah on, like, yeah definitely and i even though he's one i give him like always i give him choice like even with an ice cream which one do you want or like this thing it's like fruit you can mm -hmm. drink and it ha i have two different flavors and she's like which one do you desire you know so i i give him choice and he, he chooses he knows and so yeah it's 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 like 
yeah, parenting is all is a whole, is a whole different <laughs> conversation. Um, yeah, but it's but it but in a way, you know, like um, but it's it's like we we mentioned, you know, like trusting your body, but it's also like trusting him to know, you know, like uh, trusting his body, basically mm -hmm. that he knows that he can trust that as well. So that's, I think that's really cool as well. That's what you know, like. Um, yeah, I, I I empower him in in making choices in that sense, and and uh, you know, like you can start too early with that. <laughs> Absolutely, it's amazing how in the parenting realm, access consciousness founder Gary Douglas. He, and that's one thing that I kind of like. Oh my gosh, you know, I got really inspired by it, and was like, um, empower your kids to not protect them. Yeah. And even if you look at that, protecting is the point of view that they're like incapable of taking care of themselves. When if you just look at yourself, you always knew what was required. You knew when yeah. they forced you to take a nap and you didn't want it to and it was not required or you knew that you didn't want it to finish your dish or whatever, you know. So yeah. why would that be any different for your kids? Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Krista, thank you so much for this conversation. I'm like, I don't know. I love that we start with one topic and then they go like wherever it's required, wherever <laughs> exactly. they need to go. Yeah, and we could go on probably for ever because it's such exactly. a fun topic. It's such a fun topic, but you'll be here the next couple of days as well. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to be here all week. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I'm going to ask you where can people find you if they want to know more about whatever your next creations are your next unprojected creation and pregnancies in yeah. For yeah, yeah yeah exactly um it's yeah barsbabes.com you can find most of my um mm -hmm. my, my classes up there and uh, it's really cool i have like this sex and relationship retreat um coming up in the netherlands with ashley rose which is going to be uh, she's flying in from australia so we're very very excited you know like if you like want to you know like get more clarity on you know like real relationship with your kids and yourself and trusting your body i would say you know like a sex and relationship retreat would be <laughs> definitely <laughs> quite could be quite interesting yeah. <laughs> indeed indeed thank you i will write it in the comments so people can find it as well cool. Okie dokie. How does it get even better? Yay. Thank you. Well, thank tomorrow, you for having me. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being and jumping on board. And tomorrow's conversation, there is a meal that will go out, but it will be at 3.30 p.m. And we're going to touch the topic off. I won't tell you. Come and explore tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you again. And I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow, 3.30. Bye. Bye-bye.